the studio. Was that a big deal for you? Yeah, it was a very big deal. Um, it was, uh, you know, nighttime hours, you know, because uh, it was cheaper, you know, and uh, working with, uh, you know, a studio engineer at the time who would had some experience but never really mixed a rock band but said he did. Um, and I was trying to describe what it was we were hearing in our heads, you know, in order to communicate with the engineer. I remember that being a, a kind of a comical situation, especially with Eddie, our bass player. And uh, he, I remember him standing above the uh, engineer and the engineer looking at him with this big question mark above his head because Eddie was saying, I want my bass to sound like this. And Tom, our engineer, didn't quite know what that meant. So, but you know, you over time you learn how to communicate what it is you want. You learn the definition of certain phrases, and you learn the the studio speak. You know, so you can communicate. Well, we uh, sold sixty thousand records of our own. You're kidding me. On two hundred six records, which is our label, and that uh, impressed you know all the major labels. It was a very high amount of records to sell on your own, and they figured, you know, with their networking and their uh, setup, they, you know, they could sell a lot more than that. You know, so uh, we were in a very fortunate position to be able to pick uh, which label we wanted, and uh, we chose EMI, of course, because of their worldwide uh, coverage, and uh, you know, they had capital, and the Beatles were on capital, and so you know, right. all made sense. Well, it's been more like a wave, you know, uh, waves in the ocean, you know. You kind of do, you know, this kind of thing, you know. 